everyone. It's Saturday night. Welcome to a brand new series of the Jonathan Ross Show. And look, we've got a brand new set. Do you like it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Pretty great to see, isn't it? I feel like I've gone through the keyhole into Elton John's utility room. <laughs> we have got some amazing guests coming up the next few weeks. And wow, what a way to start tonight. Let's see who's in the green room this evening. We fell in love with her in Speed. We loved her even more in Miss Congeniality. Of course, her Oscar-winning performance in The Blind Side. So many great movies. It's Sandra Bullock, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sandra, you look good. Also, we have one of, not only one of our biggest selling pop stars of all time, but she's also one of the all-time greats of British television, Miss Scylla Black. <laughs> Hello, Scylla. Hello, I'm always so excited when I see Scylla Black. Also, on the lineup tonight, one of the biggest stars on the planet, Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Entertainment this Saturday night, Mr. Tom Hanks, looking gorgeous and handsome as ever. And with his first live TV performance since turning pro, it's X Factor winner James Arthur. Young James, looking cool, James. Looking handsome, cool, composed, ready to go. That's all coming up in a minute. First of all, let me just get this out of the way because there's no question what was the biggest news story this week. Liam from One Direction had his pants stolen. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Silla. <laughs> Well, I wish. <laughs> You've never stolen anyone's pants, have you, Sarah? Well, I would, if, if I had the chance, I would have stolen Cliff Richards. Wow. <laughs> so many things I want to say, but none of them I feel I can. <laughs> uh, you know what I found most shocking about that story, ladies and gentlemen? I didn't think those boys even wore pants. <laughs> Harry Styles doesn't need pants. To Harry, pants are like the plastic cover you get on the screen of a new mobile phone. Once you've peeled them off, there's no point putting them back on. You're open for business. He doesn't need the coverage. And things have changed 20 years ago. The girls used to throw their pants at the stars. Tom Jones used to get them thrown at them all the time, you know? Maybe, I'm thinking, maybe that girl wasn't actually a One Direction fan. Maybe she just needed a new pair of pants. The recession has hit everyone. <laughs> Stella, uh, you, you know Tom Jones, of course. Well, is there anybody that I don't know at my age? <laughs> <laughs> now, you, uh, you were a friend and a, a associate. You never threw your pants at him, did you? No, they weren't big enough. OK. <laughs> Tom, have you ever thrown your pants at anyone? Uh, in anger, yes. In, <laughs> uh, furious. <laughs> OK. I want to end on a nice positive note with this. This is the cutest picture I've seen all week. Uh, get ready. This is as cute as it gets. Have a look at this animal. <laughs> How cute is that? That cat's name is Snoopy Babe. I think the cutest cat in the world, and I've seen a few. Okay, look at that. It looks like Holly Willoughby in a onesie, doesn't it? Look at that. Look, it's beautiful. Look at that. Oh. Waves of ah. Oh. Here she is, fresh from the shower. Look at this. You see that? <laughs> And you know she's a girl because only women can do that thing with the towel with one hand and it stays on the head. She might look cute and innocent now, but give it a couple of years and she'll be in her pants swinging on a wrecking ball. <laughs> That's how they all grow up. Every dad, every dad's nightmare, right there. Okay, but of course you know what happened because this is, we've just shown you a new cute animal and it's only a matter of time before some ridiculous, shallow celebrity will get one of those cute cats just to draw even more attention themselves. And I think, what a great idea. So say hello to my new little friend, Heathcliff. Here, look at this. You're gorgeous, aren't you? She's gorgeous and she knows it. How sweet is she? It's a he, sorry. How sweet is he? <laughs> He's so sweet, in fact, that if anyone in the studio has type 2 diabetes, they should look away now. <laughs> there you go. Take him, take him to my dressing room, and I'll love him for a week before I forget about him like all the other animals I bought. Now, uh, let's get my first guest out. Ladies and gentlemen, she's already bagged one Oscar. I don't want to jinx it, but if you ask me, she is a shoe in for another one, for her incredible performance in a remarkable new film. It's not out until November. She's here tonight to talk about it. It's called Gravity. Will you please welcome the fabulous Sandra Bullock, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Incredible. Well, 
Wow, what an outfit. I love it. Thank you. I'm loving the short. Look at those short clothes. Oh. You go over there, you can... I know, hard not to follow. I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, congratulations on the film. Like I just said, uh, I've seen it and uh, I was looking forward to it. Wow, it really was just incredible. James Cameron, and we know James Cameron, he directed Avatar, he directed uh, Terminator 2, you know, he knows his stuff when it comes to space. He described Gravity as the greatest space film ever made. Um, but I guess when you're making a film, you have no way of knowing whether people are going to love it or yep. whether you put the same amount of work into a film which, which doesn't click with people as, yep. a, as a hit. Well, that's the, I think that's the case with any film, but this one in particular. Usually you have chemistry or some scene at the end of the day, you go, yes, I nailed it, I was amazing. Um, not in this case. No, there was never a day that we thought we were amazing. <laughs> well, we should explain as well, because it's 90% just on you, isn't it? It's 90%, 80% of the film is just looking at you and you're trapped in various yeah, situations. Yeah, sorry. And, it's, that's, well. that's what you do. <laughs> Without makeup on, you didn't wear makeup either, did you? Yeah, that, sorry again. <laughs> and that's when a 3D face comes hurling at you. <laughs> well, and again, I'm, I'm going to apologize. It's, it has some horrific elements. My face coming at you without makeup <laughs> is one of them. So. In, and 3D, and you can see it. On IMAX, 3D and IMAX. Oh, again, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, you're stuck in space, and this is the, I don't want to give too much away, I guess, you can set up for us, but you're stuck in space, but with George Clooney. I know. That I'm not going to apologize for. Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he looks pretty good in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Okay, we have a, a clip we're going to show you, and I'm warning you, even the clip is kind of intense. Uh, I went to see this with my wife, and she said the film should have a warning on it, because she said she almost had a panic attack several times during oh. the film. I mean, she was sitting there holding her breath at one stage. Uh, so we're going to show you the clip now, but it is really intense, and you'll see just uh, how powerful the drama is. This is Gravity. It opens here on 7th of November. Wow, how about that? That's so... Just that tiny piece there, you're going... Because she detaches, it looks like she's even in a worse situation. That, she she kind of is. That's yeah. no fun. Yeah. Um, so you're shooting that. I mean, it, you know, I would have thought that was shot in space. Yeah. I, and I know how that is, but that looks like it's in space. You were, I guess you were on devices for a long time. You were being spun yeah. around and thrown around. We had, we had several sound stages, which were all like large black rooms. And at the end of each one was a torture device that, that required me to get into it and be tortured for, you know, eight to ten hours. But it was amazing because everything that they invented for this, ha it, was, it was a prototype. They invented specifically for this because the technology did not exist until those amazing minds came together and created that apparatus. I hear there was, there was a camera that would rush towards your face at, at yeah. great speed, is that one? Yeah, why? yeah. Yeah, that, that, it did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, allegedly, and I didn't find this out until he started doing press, the day before I was to get into that, you know, it's, it's called the light box. You, you're sort of harnessed in and you can't move, you're, you're locked in and the camera's rushing uh, at your face 25 miles per hour and allegedly it went through the dummy's head and um, that was the day before I got there and they just didn't feel the need to mention that. <laughs> and you called George Clooney a dummy like that? Is that okay to say that? <laughs> Oh, now, now. You know I'm Not just teasing. Not to our George. Can't okay. do that to George. Well, hey, speaking of George, I hear yeah. you guys had, uh, obviously you have a rapport. You've known him for years. I know. I don't think you'd worked with him before now, had no, you? No, we've known each other over, embarrassingly, over 20 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you had, uh, was there a competition of sort? I read there was a competition of sort going on the set between the two of you. Well, you know, it was either making fun of our director, Alfonso Cuaron, who's a wonderful man from Mexico, and we attempted the accent, but it turned out a little Cuban, a little, you know, Al Pacino, you know, how you doing? Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> so we either did that, um, or we would rap off to a, an old rap song that we both knew from, from high school. Would it be this one? Oh, oh yeah. No, yeah. Would it be that, that one? That's the one. Yeah. How much of that rap do you know? <laughs> I know a lot. You know a lot about that. <laughs> I mean, the sad part is I, I learned the words because I liked this, this guy in high school, and I was like, next time I go to that dance, I'm going to know every word. <laughs> I'm going to make sure he sees me lip-syncing it, and I'm going to catch his eye, and I'm going to, like, say the words, and he's going to like me. <laughs> and sadly, it worked. Wow. I know. Wow. I have so, those so, skills. Uh, could we have a little bit of the rap from you? Would you I mean, uh... can you buy the... <laughs> it's, it's what the people want. Are you going to play it? I think, we, would, you like it, would you like it to be played and join in, or would you rather just uh, do a Does solo spot? Does anyone else hear <laughs> Okay, I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do the first one, and then I'll, you know, I'll just, I'll, if I feel Shall like we, continue. Do you I want just, the music? Yes, I need music okay. to do this. <laughs> do you, if I'm going to humiliate gonna... myself, I need some beats. Give me some beats, yo. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You're so old school. I know it. Okay. All right. Okay. If we if we could give uh, Ms. Bullock the beats she's requested. Oh, so you're not even going to play the lyrics to show that I know them? No. Yeah. Well, we'll know. They're, I think they're with. Oh, my God. I'm I said a hip hop, a hippie, the hippie to the hip, hip a hop, and you don't stop the rock to the bang bang, the boogie. Say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie, the beat. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm a rapping to the beat. And me, the group, and my friends are gonna try and move your feet. See, I am Wonder Mike, and I'd like to say hello to the black, to the white, the red, and the <laughs> and yellow. But first, I got it. Bang, bang. A boogie to the beat. That was great. Wasn't that great, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> There's a lot of lyrics there. I don't know any of them. I know, I know. But That's George great. actually knows a, a few more of the lyrics. I, some of the bridges I got lazy and I felt they were unnecessary in my luring of yeah, the, the yeah, man yeah. in So you were, you were just... I got lazy. Yeah. yeah, hip. So I did a lot of that. But he knows all the, the bridges. With that, that I, deep voice of it. Oh, and he, yeah, it's, he brings that on to Yeah. Me. And then he gets all, oh, brother, we're out there on you. Right. And he just... You know what? I was thinking about your career. I was thinking about some of the, 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 the best films I've seen you in and a couple of films which didn't hit as much. That maybe you mean the stinkers? <laughs> well, one or two, yeah. but no man. Yeah. And very few. <laughs> and you know what was a remarkable year, I thought? There was a film come out called, uh, was it called It's All About Steve? Or? Oh, one of my favorites okay. still. It's going to become a cult classic okay. in about another four years. Okay, so it may well. It's <laughs> 2009. And that came out, and you won an award. People awarded that. And, and it's all subjective, of course, but they said this is the, the worst, the worst film, film, film of made. the year. Yes, okay. yes. And, and what I loved about Sandra Bullock is you turned up to accept that award. Yes, and then they took it back. <laughs> Because <laughs> apparently I took the original award, and I go, well, what, what else am I supposed to take? <laughs> so yeah, so they gave me, a, a, it's called the Razzie, so I accepted that with and great flair. And here's the thing, that's the same year, a little later that year, the, the Blind Side came out, mm -hmm. the Blind Side, for which you won the Oscar, mm -hmm. one of the best movies, certainly, of the last decade or so, and certainly of that year. So I guess, once again, you, you never know going in there, Yeah. For, you work as hard on both those yeah. films, and then... Well, no one sets out to make a crappy film. You know, you, you set out to work as a team and, and work on an idea that might be original in a, in a sort of storyline that we all are familiar with, but you want to do something different, and when you push the envelope, there's either the failure or there's the, you know, odd chance that things come together. But is it harder, than to, is it harder to make a comedy? I know you've made a lot, but I mean, of course, oh, yeah. Blindside is, you know where the drama is, and yeah, you know it's yeah, a true story, yeah, yeah. whereas you're making something about Stevie's, the tone and everything, is it just a tougher job? The comedy? Yeah. Because if, if, if it's not working... Um, it, it's, nothing can fix it uh, unless you just keep at it and, and you don't have music or cut into a close-up shot or, or all the elements to help you sort of figure it out. So when it's a stinker, it's a stinker and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, but The Blind Side is a great film. I, you know, it's one of those movies that where if someone in the house is sick or something, someone will put it on because it's so heartwarming, it's so lovely. And you know, I cry every time I see it. But you know, the nice thing is that that's that family. They are exactly like that. I mean, we, I even toned her down a little bit, but I... I I love that family. They, they are still those people. I still communicate with them on a, at least a weekly basis or every two weeks. And they just are, they are unabashedly brave in how they love and how they take care of people and force other people to take care of the people that are in need. Uh, do you still uh, smuggle sausages? <laughs> <laughs> if you're referring to the Bavarian food sausage, why well, yes, yes I do. <laughs> That sausage, yes, I I so, would you, to would smuggle. You, would you like to explain yourself? Did you smuggle one into the UK? You can get them here, I guess. I was, I was, I was in Bavaria just before I came here and was contemplating, do I smuggle or do I not? Um, but I could not locate the sausage of choice because it is very specific, as we all know. You can't just have a general sausage. You, uh, you should explain. You have a love of a particular German sausage. They know what I'm talking about. They didn't go to that, that disgusting potty place that you went to. <laughs> well, I just wanted to explain. This is the mother, your mother's side yes, of the family. Yes, it's in, in Nuremberg, or Nuremberg, if you're German. They have these little Bavarian sausages, and they're fried and seasoned in a way, and you have them for a traditional Christmas dinner, but we eat them for our Christmas dinner. So to get them into the States after my mother passed away, she passed away with the secret as to who was her connection. Because wow. she would get them smuggled in and they always arrived. And we keep asking the family, who was it? And no one will give up wow. the person. Wow, it's very, very mysterious. So if any of you know Who's who smug? helped my mother smuggle the sausage, <laughs> let me know. Well, it sounds like you've got it down to a fine art yourself. Though. I'm not going to ask you where you hide them. But here's I mean, the that's thing, a... I, I'm hiding them openly. I mean, I can't... <laughs> You're wearing them, are they your but, earrings? You know, but then what I said, I said, I smuggle it. Yeah. So, and so, you know, if you go through customs, you're just like, 
really? You're just gonna, you're gonna take the wieners, really? <laughs> you think they turn a blind eye for you? No, I've had them taken. Wow. So what I also do is I have them shipped from various sources, and I'm, 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 I'm hopeful one will arrive before Christmas. Day. Do you like a British sausage now and then? <laughs> well, who doesn't? I mean, who doesn't? You know, on that classy note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, let me say, for no other reason than I believe so heartily, Gravity, one of the best films I've ever seen, and one of the best performances I've ever seen. Go and see it. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Sandra Bullock. Still to come on the show, we have music from X Factor winner James Arthur, Cilla Black, and Tom Hanks. So don't go away. Join me after the break. <laughs>